welcome to another edition of The Rev Up brought to you by Crowcast. Uh, this week we're previewing the big match against the Lands up at the Gabba. Lands. <laughs> Uh, but before we go down that road, let's mm. just spend a moment to uh, bask in the glory of last week's victory over the pair. Yeah, love it. Always wake up with a big smile on my face the next day. Do oh, you? Yeah. yeah, fuck Port. Mm. <laughs> yeah, fuck Port. 6-1 now. Uh, for what? Kenny and... Oh, yeah. Kenny and Pot. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he's trying to do sign language. I, I don't, don't know, know what, what that was all about. Yeah, really yeah. don't. Um, yeah, but apart from, you know, 10, 15 minutes in the last quarter where we were a bit cooked and... Uh, they won a few ruck contests. Mm. Um, I thought it was a pretty solid win. Yeah, I did start getting a little bit worried when they kicked that last one to get well, it was it fifteen points or whatever it was. Um, but and then you know Hugh Green were taking that hanger and kicking it in the that's, middle of the mark. So that's like, when I started to worry because that's one of those things that happens like flattens you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and um, so that that scared me a little bit. But we, to the boys' credit. Well, let me actually rephrase that to Sloan's credit. Yeah. Just went, get on me back, lads. Get yeah, me back. He did. And just got us home. He lifted us up. Yeah, and just yeah. got us home. So, uh, But look, we won. So who cares? Move on. We win. I just thought uh, the biggest talking point out of the game was just the style of play. Mm. You know, it, it, I haven't watched too many Crows games in the last five years where there's, their game style has filled me with confidence. Mm. Uh, they've always been kind of a brittle team. Where it's when it's going well, it's going really well, and it looks fantastic. And you know the witches' hats are out. like that. Yeah, one little thing like Huey Greenwood's mark. Yeah, one little thing, and you know the all mark, the, but the heart spray. What, what is he? Just take another five minutes back, Hugh, please. Well, just kick it above grass level. <laughs> well, sake. that does help. You're yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Did he shoot like? Was he a flat shooter? I don't know. Never personally studies <laughs> a jump. Studied his jump shots. I can't tell you. Oh, but anyway. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I don't know whether you noticed that, but I really felt, and I tweeted a couple of times during the game, that it was just rock solid, mm. you know? It was, um, the pace wasn't too quick. We were moving the ball well, but we weren't sort of frenetic about it like Port were. But we still cut them apart, I we, thought. We did at yeah. times, yeah. but it was more considered. Yep. Um, and because of that, as we spoke about last week, we were able to push up and get tons of uh, repeat yep. inside 50s. Yep. Um, One area that we are lacking at the moment, I don't know if it's on purpose or whether it was just a, because of Port's matchup in their midfield because they're strong, but we're starting to lose clearances and it doesn't seem to be affecting us. It did sort of worry us a little bit in that last quarter um, when Ryder got on top, but we don't seem to be too bothered about losing the clearance count anymore. It, yeah, you're right. And it's really interesting. We've, we've talked about it a little bit over the last couple of weeks. It's a, it's a massive change for the Crows. Um, and you'll notice, uh, despite the fact that Crouchy, um, Matt Crouch, um, only played a third of the game, um, in the last couple of weeks against Frio and Port, mm. his uh, stoppage numbers, his clearance numbers have been well down. Yeah. Um, and I think we've just taken one bloke out. Well, it's interesting because it's had a massive effect because we don't seem to be getting clearance clearance properly out it's a lot more pressured now exactly there seems to be more pressure on the ball carrier coming out of that yeah. clearance or stoppage um and we still win enough of it um and yeah. it's more focus on contested ball at the next contest after yeah. the clearance yeah I, I think we're corralling the the congestion a little bit more yeah and i think that's what dropped off in that last quarter and that's why they got on top yeah um plus i got some some nice work from Ryder when Ryder oh, was and, getting a bit tired and say what you want about spp but like he was pretty he big. played well he played pretty and especially in that last quarter he almost got him over the line by yeah I, I mean he was comfortably yeah. their best for mine easy yeah um, and look, he's a bull, and I, yeah. don't, I don't, you know, people hang shit on him, but I, yeah. I don't mind him as a player. You get, you see, what you see is what you get. Yeah, with he's him. an honest footballer. Yep, but. I agree. Um, but look, so there's a definite game uh, plan change. We spoke a bit about that with Marty. Uh, Don Pipes made some references to it in his presses and that. Yep. So, um, and after the game, I wrote on Big Footy uh, when people were talking about it. It's like that's the game style that wins your flag. Yeah, I agree. It's uh, not prone to get blown out. Well, because it doesn't matter if you play well necessarily. Mm. If you, it's a the type of game style that if you stick to your structure, it's not easy f for you to be scored against and therefore lose games. So all you got to do is grind out a game when you're having a dirty day, and we've yeah. done that a couple of times already. Yeah. So that said, we got the uh, Bears this week and uh, the Bears. <laughs> <Yeah>, okay. <laughs> Remember them? No. No, you would have been. Too I wasn't young. born in the 1900s. Yeah, you were. No. <laughs> um, 
yeah, we've got the Lions this week. And uh, coming off a couple of tough uh, games and travelling up to Queensland... I don't know, a bit of a danger game. Let's go through the top. <laughs> let's go through the lineups. All right, so uh, let's go through the lineups, shall we? Shall we? Okay. <laughs> shall we? Mm. All right, Lions first of all. And uh, front defence, we've got Luke Hodge, uh, Harris Andrews, and Daniel Rich. Uh, halfbacks, uh, Witherden, Gardner, and Robinson. Probably quarterbacks in that halfback line. Not a lot of defence going on. Do you reckon if Mitch Robinson had been the one to throw that elbow instead of G. Abler or N. Fife, do you reckon he'd be playing against us this week? I don't know. Fife gets a bit of a bad rap sometimes, but I do think that. Mitch Robinson is definitely targeted, and I think Ablett is a protected species, one hundred percent, thousand percent. Yeah, like you just run at a bloke like this. Yeah. Oh, but it's all I right. was shepherding him. Yeah. Uh, Chris Scott said it was a poor action, but unintended. Unintended. Which one's Chris? Geelong coach. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, uh, Jared Berry on the wing, Lockie Neal just having a massive season in the middle, and mm. Hugh McLuggage on the other wing. Take my luggage. Human cluggage. <laughs> Go on. Yeah, fire. No, no. Uh, Cameron Rayner at uh, half forward with Elliot Hitwood, one of my more favourite players. Really? Uh, yes. Why? Oh, just, okay. Uh, McCarthy. <laughs> Ask me detail. <laughs> McCarthy on the other flank. And then we got the trader. Boom! Charlie no, Cameron. No, you can't hate him. He's a good player. Uh, uh, McStay at full forward and McInerney on the other just, forward pocket. just before we move on, yeah. there's a lot of mix, mix going on in this team. I've never noticed that before. There's about four of them. Thanks for your insight. No, that's all right. Uh, <laughs> Stephen Martin, who tends to play well against us for some bloody reason. Uh, oh, that's good. Dane Zorko and Jad Lands. Lands. The... Uh, Lands playing for the Lands. The, the twice uh, cast off. Twice Jared. removed. Yeah. And yet... I'd have him in my team today. He's pretty. He's been a little bit irrelevant this year, though, to be honest. A little bit. A mm. little bit, yeah. Uh, on the bench for them, we've got uh, Walker, Hinge, Matheson, and Answorth. Cool. How about the Crows? Yeah, they're good. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start at the full forward line. We've got Huey in the pocket. The Big E's, as you call him, at full forward. Eddie in the other pocket. Tommy Lynch on a flank. Tex at centre half forward. Chase Jones back in the side. Yeah, good to see Chase back. Yeah, uh, who are you coming in for? Riley Knight. Yeah, you've been gunning for Riley's head for the last three weeks. I so you'd wouldn't be say happy. gunning. I'd just be making. Please, you know, please. Chase had twenty six touches in the twos last week. Yeah, good on him. So he's on the half forward flank. Um, Took Riley Knight three weeks to get twenty six mm, touches. Shut up. Let's go on. Okay, <clears> let's. <throat> are you sure? Yes. You done? Good. Okay, cool. Center we have D Mac on the wing. Um, Camilla Yolman in the center, and then B Smith on the other wing. Half back line, we've got Lady, Hardigan, and Jake Kelly. Lucky. And then full back <laughs> line, we have King Keith, as we like to call him nowadays. Ex cricketer. Oh, no shit, really. Yeah, Who do you play for? Uh, I have Victoria. Melbourne Stars, mate. Come on, get your shit together. Um, <laughs> and then full back line, Daniel Talia. And then back in the other pocket is Brown for the second week in a row. We missed him. <laughs> we missed him. We missed him. How you going? Yeah, good. How are you? <laughs> What about the rest of them? Just had a drink with the rest of them. <laughs> uh, followers, we've got Riley O'Brien, Brad Crouch, and Sloan Dog. Interchange. B. Gibbs is back in as well. Obviously recovered from whatever it was, back spasms or gastro or whatever it was the week before that. I don't know. And then Looch, Rat, and Murph to finish off the bench. So the big story there, I guess, is Matt Crouch not getting up. Yeah, I mean, got one on the hip, what, third quarter? No, nah, it was early. Th- and he played 30% of the game. Second quarter? Yeah, well, I thought he came back on though. Nope, didn't come back on. No, I think he did. Nope, didn't come back on. I think he might have. actually didn't come I back on. I think he may have come back on. <clears throat> All right, so get on Twitter <laughs> and tell Cam that he's wrong because uh, he that'd played be, thirty-three. He played a, about thirty-four percent of game time. That'd be a first, would it? Me being wrong. Right, yeah. well, yeah, yeah. get used to it. <laughs> Uh, and then emergencies, if we want to go through that as well. Riley Knight, obviously. Ned McHenry, nice to see his name pop close. up. Yeah, close. Um, Paul Hunter and Paholke. Now, there's another name that's missing from there for the second or was it the third week in a row. Well, I think he was named as an emergency for Hawthorne this week. <laughs> Shit. Well, I'm thinking mid-season draft. <laughs> We're not going to drop him. <laughs> well, we just can't cut him from the list. Oh, it would be good <laughs> if he could, though. It'd be a waste it'd of good money. if he could, though. Nah, because you'd want picks for him because we'll get a first rounder, I reckon. We'll, we'll snake First someone. First rounder. We'll snake someone, I guarantee no, it. Not going to happen. Hey, he's got years left on his contract. Anyway, um, look, 
I, I like the look of the Crows team. Yeah. I like I like um, the inclusion of Jones. Uh, yeah. I know you reckon I gun for Riley Knight, so we won't spend too much time. But I think, irrespective of your opinion on Knight, I think Jones officer offers us officers officers us <laughs> just as much defensive pressure, but a little bit more pace and vigor around the contest. And I'd love him to just kick a goal. I keep saying it. Yeah, just, I know. We've got to be. One. We've just got to just kick back one. him. Yeah, yeah, just kick one. So, just a couple of key players for the for the Lions because they haven't been going too bad. They're five and three, same as us, um, but lost uh, their last. Sorry, lost three of the last five. So form guide, not so good. But no, they have been tailing off. Mm. Uh, but they started the the year really well. They did. Um, but look, there's a couple of players that have just been um, tearing it up for them. Lockie Neal, Ooh, um, what a jet in the middle. Uh, you know, top five and just about every statistical every that you'd want, yeah. ranking. I think he's uh, third on the betting for the brown at the moment at about six bucks. It's good money. Uh, and you could do a lot worse. A couple of things about Lockie Neal. He handles the ball a hell of a lot. Mm. Uh, probably a crouch-like stats in terms of kick to handball Some ratio. Some would say worse, actually, to Some be would. honest. Some would. Yep. Um, but his stoppage numbers, his clearance numbers are uh, fantastic. Immense, yeah. And it's pretty clear that the way they use Neil is as an extractor mm-hmm. and a distributor. So he's going to get in and under. He's going to be the first to the contest a lot of the time. Um, he's going to be dishing the ball out. Do you buy into the media hype about stop Neil, stop the Lions? I don't know whether you... I don't know. I think you're pushing shit uphill to stop Neil. Yeah. I think he's one of those players that is just going to accumulate... I think what you've got to do with Lockie Neal is minimise the effectiveness of his disposals. Yep. So you've got to have enough pressure on him and you've also got to cover his outlets. He's going to handball a lot. He's going to handball out of congestion a lot. Yep. And I think the way that we're setting up now, not quite committing too many players to the to the ball or yep. as many players to the ball, I think that, that sets us up really well to try and minimise the effectiveness of his ball coming out. Yeah, that's a fair call. Um, look, Harris Andrews down back has also been good. He's uh, uh, ranked very highly in uh, uh, intercept marks uh, and rebound 50s for them. Um, you know, he probably is the key there. They've got him lined up against the Yees. Not that it really means much on the team sheet, does it? No, but I think he might play a bit higher than fullback. I think he might play more across a half or half back line for them. Go more on texture. Yeah, he's very much a, a similar style of player to Keith. Yeah, Russ, yeah. I reckon. it's probably a, a bit of a like for like, actually. Mm. So, but we have to make him accountable. Mm. Um, and that that means that whether it's Tex or whether it's um, Elliot, not Harry, BT, or whoever it was that called Harry Himmelberg yeah, last week. I heard that. I was like, BT, can't mate. Wow. Uh, or moder- oh, I can't no, it was it BT. Was. It was Dwayne Russell. Oh, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Easy's going to have to, um, you know, present, and he, we know that that's what he does. That's yep. one of his strengths. He gets to a lot of contests. Yep. Um, but Tex also is going to have to work hard, uh, so that Andrews doesn't have enough scope to be able to drop off and be that intercept player. Yep. So, um, you know, T Lynch, and I know I think you'll probably talk um, about us in a minute, but yep. T Lynch is back on his bike, which yeah. is really good. Um, Getting and, real busy. Loved yeah. it. So, you know, that's going to make their defensive six accountable. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, but, but I think Andrews, uh, being able to minimise Andrews' uh, ability to stop our forward entries is going to be quite key. Um, and look, we can't really examine the Lions at the moment without talking about uh, CC. Cameron, first game against the Crows? Mm, I believe so, yeah. Um, some talk, but... Yeah. Uh, Bit of bit of shit chatting going on behind scenes. Yeah, apparently he's a little bit close with uh, old Smithers and Lady, and obviously Eddie as well. But apparently there's a bit of shit talk between those two. Bit of shit talk going yeah. on. Uh, and you reckon he'd be out? Of, he'd be on the turf if he gets an early one. I reckon. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So, uh, but look, let's not downplay his importance to Brisbane. I mean, he's playing really well. Uh, yeah. He he's he's hitting the scoreboard. He's getting touches. He seems to be in games for longer for them. Yeah, and look, we know what he can do because his uh, 2017 series for us in the finals was massive. And he's sort of, he's had a bit of injury and whatever, but he's sort of carried on from there Mm. and developed his game more. So we know the danger that he is. And if he gets gone, 
that'll be hard to yeah. stop. Well, uh, we saw it last week, and I think it's not uh, any secret that the Crows' vulnerability is against uh, speed. Yep. So there's a couple of blokes in this team, and, and Cameron, I think, is one of them, that if he gets loose, he's going to cut us up with his pace. Yep. But you would think, and I'm sure you'll talk about this as well, but you would think it would probably be Brandy to go to him first. Yep. Uh, Brandy's not slow, but he's not express. Yeah, we wouldn't call him Charlie Cameron quick. No, and we probably don't have a player in the team. No. no. But do, you, do, you reckon, do you reckon that if Charlie does get off the chain a bit, do you reckon Chase? I mean, it's not a bad option. Um, you don't know whether Chase has got it in him to play like that. Oh, you I don't you know. just don't. Well, we don't know. It's an unknown. Yeah. Is what I'm saying. Um, and I tell you what, though, welcome to AFL football. Go stand Charlie Cameron when he's kicked three and a quarter. Yeah, like that'd yeah. be a pretty big, big task for the young fella. Don't yeah. know whether it'll happen. It'd be great to see, just to see what would happen. It'd be very interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, you know, uh, there, there's a reason. You know, and I guess some of it is form uh, yeah. that Jones is in the team and yep. and Knight's not in the team. Yep. But it makes you wonder whether we just want that little bit more pace, and maybe in the back of Don's mind there is a little bit of a what if scenario. Maybe we'll see. So we will see. Yeah. But I, uh, I think they're the keys uh, for us to watch out. Yeah, for with I'd the agree lines. with that. What you said there, I think that's pretty spot on. So in terms of crows, though, um, I started first with Huey Greenwood. Yeah. Huey Greenwood obviously debuted against the Brisbane Lions and kicked. I think it was it four in I his think first it was game. Four, yeah. And like it sort of lit it up. Um, always likes playing against them regardless. I think him down forward has been really, really good for us. It gives like us, it. yeah, a bit of point of difference like that big hanger that he took. Yeah. He just seems to be able to kick goals from stoppage. Yeah. Well, when he doesn't deserve takes to. Takes marks. Yeah, takes marks as well, obviously. But he, he just seems to find a way to kick goals. Mm. I don't know how he does it because he's not exactly quick. He's a little bit mobile, but he's nothing special in that department. I but think it's because he doesn't panic. I think it also he doesn't get pushed mm. off the ball very easily. Mm. But he also seems to be able to kick goals under pressure, which is pretty vital and it's not an easy skill to have. Yeah. Um, but I think if Huey gets on top, especially because there doesn't seem to be a... a an obvious matchup for him down there. Yeah. He's like, <clears throat> he's probably going to be Hodge, but Hodge doesn't really play defense. He plays his quarterback. Court, yeah. yeah. But, and they've got a couple like that. And yeah. we'll talk about that when we go through the, the, the zones and how it's going to line up. But I think if Huey gets on top, which is looking like he's probably going to, he's going to probably kick four or five. I got a feeling about Huey this yeah. week. And he's loves he, Brisbane and he's close as well. Yeah. yeah. Is he from up that way? He is, isn't he? No. Nah. Oh, I thought he was Queenslander. No, nah, Tasmanian. Oh, that's right. Yeah, of course. Why did I think that? I don't know. Did he live in Gold Coast for Never. a while? Never been the first time there. <laughs> <laughs> Ever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except okay. for when he yeah, debuted yeah, two yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Um, and then the other one that I had as well, and I think that we sort of touched on this already, is Brownie. Yeah. Um, I think that we really missed him. How good did we look down oh, back with we, him in there? And I don't think we realised no. how much of an impact he'd actually have. I don't... It's because he is, I think we take for granted yeah. how calm he is yeah. with ball in hand, mm -hmm. how solid he is, man yeah. on man. He takes the small, quick guy every week yep. and normally does a job. Um, I think the only bloke that I can ever think of off the top of my head that gets off the chain and got on Brownie is probably Walters. Yeah, sometimes. Um, but really, there's not anyone else that sort of mm. does him in. He's normally at least 50 50s that all wins his battle. Um, and I think that him on Cameron is going to be big. And I want to see it because he'll, he'll get a bit first of, crack. You reckon? Yeah, I think so. And Brownie's got a bit of shit in him as well. Yeah. Um, he's not as um, you vanilla. Wouldn't try Lady? Nah. Why would you do that? Because you're nullifying Lady's um, impact, which is going the other way. You don't want to give him a defensive role. But you're also freeing up like Luke Brown for what? He's he's in the team to be a defensive um, lockdown player. Yeah, I know he's got a bit of. Um, attacking in him as well but you put him on their best small forward every okay. day of the week every day of the week right he's our best option for that okay um, and then the other one as well and we we like him on this show mm. we we got a bit of love for him but um cey i think if he gets it in the coal face and beats Lockie neil to his own game who look out because yeah if he can get it out distribute be that big body mid in there and just crash crash bodies and whatever <laughs> Um, you know, we're going to have first look at it, but then also his tackling and his pressure acts is going to be important yeah. as well because he's not an easy man to move. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, um, this might be the biggest bodied midfield that Brisbane's come up against so far yeah. this season. 
Um, you know, we've got a couple, even without Matt Crouch in there, we've got Brad, we've got Sloney, we've got Huey and we've got Cam. Yeah. Um, you know, all, all bulls at the ball. Yeah. So Neil, hopefully, is not going to get it all, all his own way. Well, Neil isn't very big either. No. Like, he's, he's, he's solid. His, his contested numbers for his size are very surprising. Yeah, he's actually. not a big dude. And if... And, look, he might still get on top. Like, like he's had, what? I think the lowest possession yet he's had is, like, 29 touches, and that was when he was tagged. Yeah. So he's going all right. But I think if Cam can get on top in the midfield and beat him to the ball... It's going to go a long way, not only to nullify Neil, but also for our first use yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, and he's Cam always seems to be a bit of a barometer for our contested ball. Yeah. Whenever Cam's getting the agate, our contested numbers are up. Yeah, that's true. Um, just before we move on, uh, how's the Riley O'Brien experiment going, do you reckon? Look, i got to eat my words on Riley. I genuinely didn't rate him. Mm. Um, I thought that the first couple of games were average, a bit below average, but the last couple of weeks have been pleasantly surprised not so much like last week was good he fell away a little bit in that last quarter when Ryder got on top 100% um, rucked all day basically I mean Easy chopped out a little bit I actually think Easy is not a bad second ruck by the way no um, but you know coming up against like we said last week the best ruck combo Too probably genuine. in the comp um, I thought he was pretty good to yeah. be honest and yeah when, Ryder got on top but Ryder does that Yeah, he only lost uh, hit outs by 15 or so. And look, he's going to because he's a bit undersized in terms yeah. of height. But what he's bringing around the ground and in the contest is being pretty good for us. Well, I felt like he nullified Lysett around the ground. Yep. Lysett really didn't have any impact no. at all last week around the yep. ground. And Ryder only had it in the tap and we sort of expected that anyway. Yeah, and it was only in that first portion of the last quarter yep. that Ryder really you yeah. know, used his jump to advantage. They get on a bit of a roll. They get the tails up. And, Always you know, going to happen bang, as well. Bang. Port home yeah. game, you know, crowd all that. vibe, all that. Yeah. Dwayne Russell commentating. Yeah. Um, did you hear Dwayne Russell refer to the booing of Tex Walker as respectful booing? I don't really think that that's very accurate because isn't that a bit of a... So three weeks ago when people were booing Gary Ablin, yeah. it oh, was no. a national disgrace. When he... But now we do it to Tex and it's actually out of respect. It's respect, yeah. 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 Unbelievable. We love to hate Tex, don't we? Yeah. Well, and again, Tex all of a sudden has you know one or two okay games, and everyone's gone cold on him again. I He's, think... it, it it amazes me how much of a whipping boy he can be at sometimes. Yeah, I think you know I I know my expectations of Tex are, are high at times, mm. but I think people have been incredibly harsh judges over the last couple of weeks. Oh, like the thing is, he breaks out and, and kicks a few. A couple, three weeks ago and all of a sudden he's got to do that every week yeah, we're crap. very much a team which is a sum of the parts we talk very much about uh, we hear very much Don talking about even contributions yeah, and a lot of the players a lot of the players talk about getting an even contribution Alex Keith at his uh, showdown medal presser was talking about even contribution you that's know? all you hear from the club everyone doing yeah. their bit everyone doing their bit everyone and, doing their bit and you know, that includes Walker. There's yeah. going to be times when it's going to be his turn to hit the scoreboard. And there was. He stood up, was it in the third or the last quarter? Where he kicked, I think it was the last quarter, actually, where he kicked that goal to just stabilise it a bit. Or, I can't remember, he took that mark. It was probably about 30 yeah. out. Yeah. Was it the last quarter or the third? I can't remember, but it was an important... Around the corner. Yeah. Well, kicked around yeah, the corner. Yeah, it was an yeah. important part of the game. Really needed him to step up and just kick one, and he did. And that's what he's there for. And he does it very often. Sometimes he misses them, but he kicks those more often than not. How good was that? He, that another one off the left. It was like yeah. one of the best field kicks you'd ever see from, yeah. from a big bloke. People don't understand how hard that is for a big bloke to be able to kick that sweetly off both feet. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I've got no problems with Tex at the moment. I think he's contributing. I think he's yep. appreciating the space that he's getting. I, I think he's appreciating the we're a little bit more predictable in the way that we're going forward. Yeah, well, this is sort of a good segue into the next bit. Yeah. Um, Uh, our Ford makeup at the moment seems very open and Lynchy's up and about. He's got his tail up. Um, he seems to have more room and freedom. He seems all of a sudden to be able to run again as well. I don't know if he was struggling or what, but he just It's seemed... funny, isn't it? When he's off, he looks, he looks like an old man. Yeah, but when he's up and about, all of a sudden it's like he's you know reduced his age 10 years. <laughs> it's crazy, but it's good. Um, and the thing about Lynch as well, who takes him? Yeah, well, I don't think they have a natural matchup. Maybe, right. maybe I actually think maybe Robinson might go on Lynch yeah, and to try and rough him up. Well, because Robinson doesn't normally play down back either. He normally no. in the midfield or up forward. Yeah. So it's interesting that he's been named back there. Um, but 
excuse me, they don't have an obvious matchup and they've got, like we sort of said earlier, they've got four quarterbacks. They've got, or uh, well, three really, they've got Hodge, Daniel Rich, and then Witherden. Mm. Like, none of those guys are considered defensive lockdown. No, Hodge is probably not. the most out of all of them, but that's only one-on-one. -on -one. He likes to get off and create and yeah. delegate and yeah. be the sort of the general back there. Witherden is 100% an attacking halfback. He's a bit yeah. like Smithers in yeah. that respect. Um, and then Daniel Rich is the same. Yeah. Who, who's going to be locking down all of our, our forward weapons? Who's taking Eddie? Well, and I think that shows in some of the stats that get thrown up um, mm. with the Lions because they've been scoring quite well, but yeah. they've also been conceding a lot. Uh, they concede... I think, it was like, I think it was like 200 point differential for the year compared yeah. to us. Yeah. And you can see with the way that their defence is set up there, you're yeah. absolutely right. I yeah. agree with you that they don't... It's not a lockdown team. They're relying on their. So it's key a team posts. of rebounders. Yeah, they're relying on their key post to bring it to ground, and then some um, decent ball winners on the half back and um, full back line to get it out. And if we're not going to your Harris Andrews or your Gardeners, and we're going to Huey, yeah. or we're going to Eddie, because we like to do that for some reason every time, or yeah. we're going to Lynch, what are they going to do? Mm. If they can't bring it to ground, they're stuffed. Yeah, yeah. So you know that's interesting. I, I think we match up particularly well yep. uh, on them with our forward line. Yep. Uh, I agree with you. I think they're going to struggle uh, if the particularly. I think if the ball's coming in high, I think they're going to struggle. Yeah, well, they're not very tall. Like Harris Andrews is their biggest bloke, um, but Easy's bigger than him. Yeah. Um, so you know uh, that's going to be a concern. Uh, them holding us to a score that's going to allow them to win is mm -hmm. going to be their biggest challenge, especially when our biggest strength, as it seems to be, all of a sudden, is to suffocate teams. Exactly. I think we're what is it less than seventy eight points or something again? Yeah, something like that. We're, I think we're the number one team in the comp, actually. Or yeah, close to it. Well, we were. Th I think we were three before the Port game. Yeah. So okay. we could very easily be number one. Yeah. There. Anyway, close to the top. Yeah. Look in the middle, uh, they've got some good players. Yeah. I don't think they bat anywhere near as deep as we do. And I think yeah. whilst they're whilst they're top three in that uh, rotation are, uh, you know, quality Genuine players, quality, yeah. uh, I think it's their next rotation that's going to struggle. Yep. And the stats show that they rely heavily on Neil. Neil's the only player in the top 60 for them in, in disposals for the, yeah. for the, for the uh, comp so far. And the other one they really heavily rely on more for impact is Zorko as well. Yeah. Zorko really needs to be getting his ball on the outside and when he's kicking goals, they're up and about as well. But Zorko is a hothead. Like You yeah. saw what happens when Took Miller goes to him. He doesn't handle it. He's not good when it's not on his, his terms. And if we ruffle his feathers, especially because he's not an overly big bloke. No, uh, if, no. If we, ruffle, if we ruffle his feathers with our big midfield, he might struggle. Yeah, well, I think you hit a really good point there. Just the, the physical nature of our midfield is going to be a challenge for Zorko. Yep. Um, and I think, as we spoke about before, I think if we minimise um, Neil's influence in terms of the effectiveness of his disposals and we uh, you know, just play an accountable style of game in the midfield which we have done yeah, the last couple we of weeks been, yeah. I think we've got their their six in that through that line yep. covered yep. I, I think they're going to struggle to contain Smith yep I agree um, you know they might have to sacrifice someone on to go on Smith and sit on him well their normal tagger is that Robertson bloke um, and he's not playing mm. I know McCluggish does a little bit but Robertson is normally their shutdown shut down go to um, and he can play anywhere as well. He's sort of that Cam Ellis Yeoman size yeah. and height where he can sort of play on whoever. Um, but he's not in. So you'd wonder who they're going to send to yeah. to a bloke like Smithers if he gets off the bench. And we haven't even talked about Sloaney yet. And we we don't need to. We know what we get from Sloaney. Well, he gets overlooked now. I, I mean, know. he does, wow. doesn't he? And just I've got soldier. to pull you up on this as well. Right. I've got to pull you up on this because you said to me a couple of weeks ago, oh, he doesn't get enough touches. He doesn't do this. He doesn't do that enough. It was after the North Melbourne game, right? Mm -hmm. And my refute to that was, yeah, but when he's not doing that, he gets tackles. Mm. Guess what? how many tackles he had on the weekend? 11? 13. Mm. And 26 touches. Mm. You can't tell me that even though he didn't get 30 touches, he wasn't one of the best players on the ground. Well, he played well. You gotta you gotta get around him more because <laughs> thirteen tackles is immense. That is huge. You know you know me. I will. Yeah, you get salty. Away. You, get, you get salty when he has one bad game. It's literally one bad game for the year, and it wasn't even that bad because the bloke, <laughs> even though he had sixteen touches, still had ten tackles. You got to be realistic when we're talking about Sloan because he's not going to get you thirty five plus a game, but he'll go and get you seven tackles. All right. So just say sorry, mate. Sorry, mate. Look down the camera and say it. 
Sorry, mate. <laughs> yeah, all right, good. I'm happy now. Um, they've got a bit, of, a bit of talent up forward, and this is obviously where they're most dangerous. Yeah, how do you reckon we match up? Because I reckon it's a bit of an interesting one, actually. Well, I don't like Hitwood on Hardigan, for starters. Yeah. Hitwood's a bit buddy-like in his attributes. He's clever. Hitwood. Yeah, but Hardigan is normally when he's up and about who we send to buddy. So, for me, that's sort of an obvious matchup. Who else are you going to send to him? Oh, I'd, I'd almost be putting Keith on. Yeah, but Hitwood. I think, and we sort of get caught up on matchups a little bit in yeah. this, but I've noticed that we don't really have matchups necessarily. Not as such, yeah. And a lot of the defenders, when they talk in their presses and whatever, they talk a lot about team defense. And that's why we see blokes like Jake Kelly get yeah. the cross or yeah. whatever on players. Yeah. And sometimes it doesn't work out because the, the defense doesn't get time to set up. But I think one of our real big strengths at the moment is we don't have matchups and our setup and our organization is so good. That that's why Keith is able to get off the chain like he does yeah. and come across an intercept. Look, I think we have got a really good mix. Um, yep. You know, we've got Talia who can lock down. We've got Hardigan who could come over the top and he can also play a role. Because you've got to remember as well, McStay isn't short and McInerney is like 200 centimetres. Yeah, no, that's right. So you kind of... <laughs> On Brown. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, Brownie's got him, mate. Don't worry yeah. about it. But so, and Keith for me is probably the one for McInerney because he's a bit more lanky and getting up, whereas I don't see Talia being able to get to him or Hardigan being able to get yeah, to him. Yeah, fair enough. Hardigan might have him for size, yeah. but I think Keith is the more obvious matchup for McInerney. Yeah, okay. I mean, I think it's their, um, it's their ground ball that's going to be the difference. Yeah, well, Rayner is an interesting one. Yeah, isn't it? because I he's don't that, mind him. He's that Dugowie, Dustin Martin type. He's the um, the new age full forward, as they call yeah, it, yeah. sort of the mid size bit like Mike Rusciuto was back yeah. when he was on the end of his midfield days. Um, and he's a real nat- match up nightmare because he can go into the middle. He's agile. He's quick. He's got good skills. If he's kicking goals, they're looking scary. Yeah, and you know uh, he does get involved. Mm. Um, and there's not there's not an obvious match up. No, for there's him. not. Really not. Jake Kelly's probably the only one. Yeah, and I, I don't know whether I Jake's got enough. I don't like it, no. Enough tools in the bag. But when you look at it sort of like for like, physicality and attributes wise, Jake's probably the only one that I'd probably say would go to him. You'd probably find that you might see Hardigan or Keith on him at times as well. Um, but really, they've got a lot of tall timber down there and we might find that we're a bit stretched at times. Yeah. And look, you know, again, we talk about this uh, style of play that we've been playing. We, we do seem to be playing our, our midfield... Yeah, back. Back a little bit more. Yep. We'll see Bryce back there, I reckon, at times as well. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I, I think we might see one of our midfielders have kind of a keep your eye on Rainer job yep. kind of thing. Yep. Um, because I, I think he, he, he and Cameron probably uh, loom as the biggest threats... Yeah, uh, for I us agree. in terms of in terms of matchup, you know. Yeah, in terms uh, and of it's quite yeah, on. and it's quite obvious by looking at those teams how Brisbane have been winning games. Yeah, kick more goals than the opposition. It's yeah. very basic footy. Win the ball, kick more goals. Yeah, yeah exactly. So um, and that kind of plays into our hands. I think you know the the only the only fear that I have is how we're going phys- physically. And whether we're just gasping a little bit after a couple of tough weeks. It's a long trip to Brisbane. Did we feel like we were gasping at the end of that game, though? Mm. Last week? Uh, asked me with 15 minutes to go, and I would have said, yeah. Yeah, but we rallied. We didn't look tired by the end of it in terms of like off our feet. We were cooked, but everyone's cooked at the end of a football game. Yeah. We're also a midfield rotation down as well. Yeah. And I still... I, I get what you're saying, but I don't reckon that the midfield that we've got would be too worried with the physicality that's been happening because I think they're enforcing it. Well, yeah, no, I, I think it's just the legs, basically, whether, yeah, okay. we, whether we've got the legs because they've got a bit of speed. Yeah, um, yeah, Barry's pretty quick as well. Yeah, uh, Gab is not a small ground. No. Um, we play a right up there, though. We do. I, 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 and I'm look, it's not that I'm not reasonably confident. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, all things being equal, we win this game comfortably. Yep. My, but my only fear, as I said, is if we're a little bit short on legs, if we're maybe a little bit jaded in the mind, uh, Brisbane have not been going so well the last two or three weeks. They, they'll be looking for a rebound, yep. playing at home. Uh, like, yeah. you know, it's that typical recipe danger game kind of situation. But have their confidence been knocked from pillar to post a little bit after getting absolutely schlacked by Collingwood? Well, they did get schlacked. And it wasn't just that they got beaten, but they got... No, they got pants. They got pumped, and they 
made got made to look crap as well. Mm. And I think Collingwood found him out a little bit. Yeah. Well, I think Collingwood exposed the fact that they rely heavily yeah. on a few. Yeah. Um, so, you know, look, I think I think it's going to be a case of us trying to, to um, lock the ball down across our half-back line. Yep. Um, you know, it's going to get boring, I think, for people watching the rev up because we're going to say it every week. I think we're going to be playing that territory game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, I think we're going to be using the ball methodically. I th- it it seems like we're using the more the, the ball by hand a little bit more to, to clear space and to spread the ground so that yep. we've got some space to work in and lead into. Yep. Um, and we like to push up behind those plays to to try and bounce the ball back in. So. Yep. I don't. I don't see us playing with all of our mids and our backs and just letting our forwards go to work. Yeah. So I think. I think you know the danger is if we are a little bit off our game that they might get a bit of bounce off half back with those distributors. They got Rich and yep. and Hodge and and um, you know Witherden, uh, Witherden yep. uh, there that will distribute the ball. Yep. And if they get going on transition, they'll be able to hurt us relatively quickly. Yeah, I think. I think we've been pretty good at stopping that. Like We're one of the best teams for scoring, um, well, not just scoring off turnovers, but causing turnovers yep. coming out of halfback as well. Um, so I don't, I'm not too worried about their bounce off halfback because I think we've been pretty good at setting up and stopping that. Yeah. Um, yeah, well... Who so wins? Who wins? Well, I mean, if I'm Fagan, hmm. I'm really going to try and export uh, the pace that we have, the mm. pace advantage. I'm going to be looking to get the ball on the outside quickly. So, you know, they're a kicking team. Yep. I, I expect that they'll be kicking to space quite often. Yeah. Trying to open the game up. They've got to be careful about how they move the ball because if they let us set up, they got no hope. Well, and I think that's going to be the key. They're going to be yeah. trying to move the ball relatively quickly so yep. that we can't get set defensively. Yeah. Um, and, you know... Brisbane a couple of years ago was shit, mm. right? Now they're playing a, a game style that is enjoyable to watch when it's working. Yep, um, it's high scoring. Yeah, and so that engage. I, I always find as a player when you kind of been down for a while, if you all of a sudden start kicking a lot of goals, yeah, you get a bit more engaged. And I think Fagan's tried to do that with this group, yeah. just get them up and about and yeah. kicking a few goals. They and, actually play pretty similarly to what we used to play, like to oh, be honest. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Very much a run and gun yeah. twenty sixteen style yep. of game plan. Um you know, and and it will work. Mm. You know, you will catch teams off. Yep. Um but I don't think they're gonna be able to kick enough goals. Nah, when well, like you said, the only real defensive test that they have was Collingwood, and they got owned. And look, Collingwood is probably a bit of a better side than what we are currently. But in terms of you know strangling oppositions, we're right up there as well. Yeah. So if we if they give us an opportunity to just shut that that run and gun game down, they're they're stuffed. Yeah. They got no well, hope. Collingwood beat them in the midfield that game. Yeah, and it's also that pressure act that they've got as well. They've got that yeah. high pressure footy yeah. and pressure on that ball carrier. So as soon as they try and move the ball quickly, they had you know blokes on them and they just turn it over, turn yeah. it over, and then all of a sudden the heads dropped and then it was all over yeah. from there. And it's going to be important. You mentioned frontal pressure. I think that's going to be important. Yeah. You know, get in their faces, yep. cramp them up, make them kick around the corner, yep. you know, all that sort of stuff. Yep. If we start playing that zone shit, yep. uh, that to me is just a lack of concentration because it's not part of the game plan. Well, it's sweating off is what it is. Yeah. It's not zoning, it's sweating off. Yeah. yeah. So we start seeing some of that and I think we might be in a bit of strife. But, yep. uh, you know, so you're Donny Pike. Yep. What are you telling our blokes? Oh, keep doing what you're doing, lads. Um, I think that when we've touched on it a couple of times, as long as we're setting up defensively the way we have been, we're not going to get scored against very easily. We've got to make sure that we're turning the ball over at our half-back line and then we just get it to our ball carriers. Get it to Smith, get it to DMAC, get it to Laird. Make sure those blokes have got a bit of you know say in how we're moving yeah. the ball and yeah. that'll go a long way for us going forward. And just do what we keep doing with that ball movement as well. Like We're cutting teams apart when we yeah. do go forward um, and just uh, get around Alex Keith as well. Get around. Get around King Keith. Yeah. Get around him. Did he have a? Did he make a fifty at the Gabba? Oh, fuck knows, Dad. I don't care. <laughs> He's playing footy, all right, mate. <laughs> That's a hot topic on Twitter with, oh. with us at the moment. That Alex Keith, if you're not aware, used to play cricket. Yeah, who for? Uh, Renegades. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> Was it the Stars? Yeah, yeah I, I think right so. Right. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. Okay, so you tip, mate. Um, I think it is actually going to be a little bit closer than normal. Um, well, what other people have said, sorry. Um, reason being is that we've played in there last year, I think it was like four points. Yeah. I think that they're 
going to be wanting to redeem themselves a bit after a shit week last week. Yeah. I think it's going to be hot early, but I think eventually we'll run over the top like we have in the last couple of weeks as well. But I still think we're going to win by that three or four goal bracket. I think uh, Brisbane get up by a goal. Hang on, what? Sorry, what? <laughs> you just changed your tip on me. No, it's not really changing the tip, but I'm, I'm, I've been worried all week about our uh, ability to travel this week. And the more we've talked about it tonight, the more I've thought, you know hang what? On. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Before this, you said we're going to win by six goals. And yeah. comfortably. Actually, yeah, no, not just before this, in the cast. You said yeah. we're going to win comfortably. Yeah. So, what? I've just I've just changed. Just oh. like that. This is why I'm always right. Because <laughs> you just don't know what you're talking about. You're just changing, you're chopping your opinion left, right and centre. Brisbane by goal. Oh, goodness. Really? Yeah. I'm sticking with it. Oh, goodness. I'm genuinely concerned for your welfare. You keep buying six packs because I keep winning bets. We bought this today. <laughs> and I've got nothing against the brewers. Who are they? <laughs> Who are they? The brewers of Panhead. I don't know. Don't ever buy this beer <laughs> if you like pale ale. It says pale ale. What does it say? It says pale ale on the on the uh, I can. You, I think you've had too many pale ales. I've had. This is a pale ale. It says pale ale on the can. It does, you're right. It doesn't taste like pale ale. Don't buy it if you want a pale ale. Buy it if you want a lemonade. It's just an old man not understanding what craft beer is. Right. But anyway, we'll move Look, on. Look, thanks very much. Uh, thanks to our supporters, uh, Smith Partners Real Estate and Down to Earth Electrical. Thanks also to uh, Hardware Unbox. That's uh, Tim Scorpus's uh, YouTube channel. Get around that. Don't forget the rap show on Sunday at normal time, 7 p.m. and uh, Tuesday Night Live at 8.30 p.m. as usual. In the meantime, Cameron, thank you very much. Peace out, girls, girl. Who you got this week? Who you got this week? Oh, Kenilworth? Yeah. Uh, we've got Blackfriars, mate. Right, so... Uh, top versus bottom. <laughs> top, are you bottom? No, we're top. We haven't lost yet, mate. We're <laughs> flying. Get around Div 5, mate. Get around Div 5. All right, get around the Crows this, uh, this afternoon and uh, we'll see you on Sunday night for the Rap Show. Thanks, guys.